everyone, it's Ross, and today we're going to be looking at trees that I had just planted. Fig trees, that is. And I want to talk about kind of shaping them to start, right? What's the optimal shape that you want to have with your fig tree? Well, if we look at some of the ones I've planted, these are how I grew them as container plants. Um, nice, long, single stem trunks. We get the branching up high not too high because of our storage concerns but we let them branch out the first year we get them in a single stem plant we cut that back and then let it Y off and it grows two different shoots and then from there we let it shoot out again and that's kind of the shape that I've liked to use I have used in the past with all of my container trees it works really well and they're usually more productive this way but in the ground here at least our trees honestly will never grow as a tree they'll never stay as a tree i guess you could potentially keep them as a tree if you wrapped it every year but that's never going to happen at least for me and i think inevitably it wants to become a bush it wants to become a multi-stemmed bush um very similar to how this tree currently is you can see there's all kinds of suckers that i left on here last year that have just stayed here and it just wants to keep continually suckering and usually the suckers are more healthy um, you know less fig mosaic virus also they can be more productive uh, they actually can be quite amazing so um, keeping them as a single stem tree I think is beautiful and if I lived in California Arizona somewhere where my trees took very minimal damage uh, maybe like zone 8 or higher Then I would keep my trees as a single stem tree uh, the figs that is So but here in this climate like I said, we just get too cold. It's inevitably going to revert back to what it wants to do um, So why fight that? Um, so what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to come in here to the trees that we've planted Also to some of the container plants because I've realized some of the container trees are just too tall uh, for the storage area that they're in. Um, underneath the sunroom here, it's only three feet, I think, tall. So <laughs> my trees have to be pruned back pretty hard every year to compensate for that lack of, of height in the storage area. So um, basically, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come in here and really prune a lot of this growth out. Um, you know, I may keep some of this, but the wood that has indeed survived, that's great. That's awesome, but we got to eventually come back to this point here and let these suckers do its thing. I'd rather actually have a lot of these suckers take over in the long run than the main stem that hasn't really done a whole lot. So what I'm doing is I'm actually taking out a lot of this dead wood that could have been here because this tree was here all winter. Um, believe it or not the whole thing survived but I'm gonna take out a lot of this growth here and we're gonna give this this particular one I think this variety here we're gonna give this one away so if anyone's really interested um, in getting cuttings of the varieties of this particular variety and a couple others we're gonna do a small a very small giveaway on our figs and that's ourfigs.com. It's a really, really great community for people that grow figs. I'm a part of it. I've been a part of it for years. People over there are wonderful. So to kind of give back to that community, this is what I'm going to be doing is giving them a small giveaway. And of course, a lot of my viewers are on that forum already. So as a thank you as well to the viewers, not just the community. Uh, but all you have to do is be a part of our figs. And you will be uh, have an opportunity to win the cuttings in the giveaway. Um, nothing. It's not going to be too crazy or too fancy. Some of these varieties maybe have never even fruited for me. What we are going to do is actually get the uh, the marker here and label them all. And this wood is going to be great for late season rooting. Maybe rooting things outside, outdoors. But also, if you wanted to do grafting, I think this is perfect. Here we have LSU Champagne, 
I think the LSU Champagne, a lot of people have been asking me for this one, so we're gonna sell it. And uh, this is just one that we are going to put up on FigBid. For those of you guys who have been on FigBid and, want, and have bought cuttings for me in the past, um, that's usually where they're sold. And, uh, you know, right now I'm kind of just selecting the length that I think is reasonable. Um, the amount of nodes I think is reasonable. You know, it's a very tough decision. Some of these cuttings are kind of, you know, at a weird length. Um, so it's tough to get them all the same size. It's, it's tough to get them to have all the same nodes, but it is what it is. And now we're sort of then left with this trunk. And I think I'm actually gonna cut this back even further. I think down to here. And now this thing is going to branch out really at the level we want. It may even sucker from the base. This is going to change the auxin in the tree. It's going to give a signal to the tree that, hey, it may actually be time to send out shoots from the base or send out suckers because now that auxin is now being released and the tree can, instead of having that growth that's below be suppressed, it's now free of that hormone that all plants naturally put out. We're going to do the same thing here with my long to do it and that's sort of it i think i'm going to show you guys on the video but there will be other varieties that we're certainly going to do look how extreme this one was but this certainly will come back pretty strong i have no doubts and it's going to branch out at the height that we want um, I just realized over time this is just a better, it's a better idea to do this now. Additionally, we're going to cut, I think, a little bit more off of the Rosianca persimmon. Someone had asked me recently and I gladly said yes. Uh, for a while there I wasn't selling any cuttings. In fact, I don't normally sell cuttings this time of year. So all of you guys who've been bugging me for cuttings outside of cutting season, you know, here's your chance. I'm sure I'm gonna get people asking me in the middle of June when everything's growing. Um, but this is all there's gonna be for cuttings at this point. If you want cuttings at other, other times, you have to, you know, contact me or find the FigBid page in the description of the videos and they'll be up there in um, November and December. But I think I'm gonna take this entire branch out here on the Rosianca because there's a little bit of a wound here that I don't really like and there's also a wound down there. I may let the tree do its thing and let it fruit and then next year come in and take those two limbs out. I'm not entirely sure but that's really the plan. Um, I think the Illinois Everbearing here, I actually have cuttings that I've stuck in the ground to see if they'll root themselves and they've been here all winter. I see very little desic desiccation on this, believe it or not. That's just the first like couple millimeters there. And I have a feeling they're gonna root out. It's gonna be pretty interesting to see. But uh, when people ask me, should I prune my fig? When should I prune my fig? Well, if your tree is dormant, go ahead. Look what I just did. You know, there you go. Here's another example right down there. Um, this is the Taramo Unknown here. This thing got kicked back by the cold, but you know what? I probably would have done the same thing anyway. So trying to get that branching at a lower height for these in-ground trees, that's all that really matters to me. All right, everyone. That is the video. I'll catch you all soon. Um, yeah, just pay attention to FigBid in the description, um, and that will tell you guys any of the results or any of the listings that are be listed for sale. All right. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you tomorrow.